Hello and welcome. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and in this short optics tutorial, we're going to be looking at how you create fantastic masks whilst maintaining fine details like hair using Easy Mask. So we have our first image here, and I'm just going to apply an effect to it. Uh, I'm going to apply skin tone to this and just change the skin tone a little bit deeper. I use the preset Skin Tone 9. But as we can see, this is affecting the entire image. So I'm going to create a mask that just isolates out our girl here. So I'll come up to the top left hand corner and I'm going to choose Easy Mask. Now, the basic process for creating Easy Mask is very straightforward. We define the area we want to keep in, we define the area we want to keep out, and then we let Easy Mask do the hard work for us. And I'm not going to change any of the default settings right now. And if you come down, you can see my brush shape. If I hold down the control or command key, I can change the brush size just by clicking and dragging with my mouse. And if I left click, I get a green stroke that's going to help me define areas that I want to keep in. Now, what we're essentially doing is we're telling Easy Mask the area and the colors that we want to maintain. And if I right click, I get a red stroke. And here I'll define the background, so areas that I want to take out. Now, I don't have to be amazingly accurate with this. If I wanted to, I could just right click and do a little scribble down here. And even this should be good enough to get us a pretty good result. So if we come up to the top now, I'm going to choose the final button, which is generate mask. And it's going to have a little bit of a think. And we can see that the mask has been defined over in the corner. If I look at the view mask in the viewer or just hit M, you can see the black and white mask that it has created. And I can come in, I can turn the opacity of the strokes up or down as I need to. So you can see this is a pretty good mask. We have a few areas on the edge where it's not 100%. So we can fix these up. So what I can do is I can just add a little bit of green there and there. And a little bit of red just over on the side here. And I'll calculate that mask again. A little bit of red up there again. And that will give me the mask that I'm after. And as with all masks, I can come in, I can change the opacity on this one over with this control. I can change the blur with this control. And I can change how that blur works with these three buttons here. Whether we're blurring inwards, blurring into the center, or blurring outwards. Here I'm going to add just a very, very small, maybe just a a 10 point blur inwards there. I'll turn off, generate mask, and we can see that that skin tone is now only applying to the girl. And I can come in and make a few little changes there and get it looking nice. Now, let me show you another way of using Easy Mask. And I'll just get rid of this mask and come up and generate up a new one. So here's another way of working. So we take a look up at the toolbar. We have a few different buttons of how this paint works. We have our paint foreground, which is what we've been doing now. We have the paint background brush, so we can left click to paint in red if we want to, which is what we were doing with the, the right click previously. And we also have paint unknown, which will give us a blue stripe. And we use this to define areas of the image where we don't know whether we want to keep it in or not. And we have paint missing, which we'll come back to in a little bit. I also have the eraser brush, so I can use that to get rid of strokes if I've gone over edges that I don't need to, or I've gone too far into areas, but I think generally that should be fine. And finally, we have our fill. So fill will fill the area with whatever brush we have selected. So if I have my paint foreground here, do one click, that fills in that area there. If I right click, it will fill in the background. And I'll show you a way of using fill to quickly create our tri map. Let's turn fill off. And we're going to start with paint unknown, which is our blue brush. And I'm just going to paint all the way around the edges. Now, I don't want to go too far in either direction. And I also don't want to use too big a brush because that's going to create a, a little bit more work for us afterwards. So as soon as I've defined the edge with the paint unknown, I'll come to my fill, go to paint foreground, Left click once in the middle to fill that all in. 
right click once on the background to fill that all with background and hit generate mask. Then if I hit M, I'll bring down the opacity on that. We can see we have a very nice starting point for our map. And we've now just got that effect over the edge there. So that's the filled trimap way of using Easy Mask. Let's take a look at one more shot. Now this shot looks like it's gonna be a lot trickier because we have a lot of fine edge detail. Let's come in and we'll apply a high contrast filter. Maybe not that far, but just so we can see what the effect is doing. And I'm gonna come back into Easy Mask one more time. And I'll do the same procedure as before. I'm gonna paint up in green, the areas that I want to keep in, my foreground. I'm gonna paint in red, areas that I want to get rid of. So my background, and I could just flood fill that back area there and fill in that. We don't need to do this, but it can help Easy Mask process this out a little bit faster. For doing these fine strands of hair, I'm just gonna hold down Control or Command to get a smaller brush. I'm just gonna paint a few little strokes around here. I don't have to get too detailed. And in fact, even this might be more detailed than is absolutely necessary, but let's have a little look what we get. And the important thing is not to add foreground and background paint strokes too close together unless you can't avoid it. So let's process this out and we'll have a little look at the mask we've got. So I'll hit M to show our mask or just go to the mask up there. And that's not bad. There's a few elements here where I can see that we need to, to deal with this. So I'm gonna make a background stroke there, right click, stroke, right click, stroke, same there, and probably one down here and down here as well. Now, over on this area, we're missing out on some of the details. So what I'm gonna do instead is use this final brush type, which is paint missing. And I'm just gonna paint missing over these details here, because where we're missing edge details, this is gonna help us. And maybe a little bit over there and there, and maybe a little tuft of hair just up the top there. Let's see what that gets us. So if I turn my opacity down here, you can see we've brought in a lot more of the edge detail around in this area. I can see that I do still need to maybe paint up a little bit more of the background there and do the right click paint and just do a little bit of the background there and there just to help to, just to, help to get the result that we need around about there and there, around about there. Generate that mask one more time. And for a few seconds work, that's looking really quite nice. So let's turn the, the mat off. Now, when we created the Easy Mask, I did it backwards. I chose our girl as the foreground and used the trees as the background. So do we have to do all this work again? Well, no, not at all. If I go back up to the top here, we can see if I just hit invert, I'll invert that mat and I can tweak the results how I need them. One more thing we can do with every sort of mat, not just the Easy Mask, is duplicate them between layers. So if I create a new layer, let's bring just my curves in here and I'll create a quick S curve. So this has gone across the entire image. If I want to duplicate my mask up, I just click and drag it up to the layer that I want. Now I still have full control over this mask. So if I can just invert it again, do any sort of softening that I need to. And we now have our mask over the image. And we're only controlling the contrast on a girl with our curves. And that's a quick look about how we can start to use Easy Masks in Optics. For more information about Optics and to download a free trial, then head on over to borisfx.com. You can also find other tutorials and the latest news and events. My name is Ben Browning with Boris Effects. Thanks for now, and I'll see you again soon.